What is going on boys and welcome back to the channel with Exhausted. So in today's episode of the Turbo Bill, we're going to be installing the ME221 ECU into the MX-5. Now because we don't have turbo at the moment, we can still install this and get it all up and running on a base map for the stock 1.8 engine. So that's what we're going to be doing because I guess doing things in this sort of order avoids problems because if it doesn't start after we do everything all in one go, we're kind of bugging and you don't know what's wrong. Whereas if we install this and the car fires up, then we know that this is working fine, we just need to load the base map tune for a 1.8 turbo. So yeah, let's crack on, take out the old ECU and get to installing this ME221. So first of all, the ECU is located in the passenger side footwell. So to get to this, all we've got to do is pull back the carpet right here, and that exposes the ECU cover plate, which is this metal bit right here. Like so, so I'll put that to one side. So now we have access to our ECU, it's held in using the exact same bolts as the cover. So, what we're going to do is we're going to unplug both the wiring harnesses, there's two on there, from the ECU, and then remove that whole unit from the car. And now, this is going to be quite difficult to film because I can't really remove them one handed, but you get the idea. On the top of here, there's two little tabs which we're going to push down and pull them out, and then the whole ECU unit will come straight out. And now, as you can see, we've got the whole ECU and the frame completely removed from the car. So we're gonna have to go ahead and open this up and swap it over with the motherboard sort of thing or the other ECU which is inside the box. Oh yeah, and I forgot to mention at the beginning, before working on any electronics within your car, be sure to disconnect your negative battery terminal just to be on the safe side and, before, and prevent any short circuits. So now we've got the ECU completely out of the car, we're gonna go ahead and remove the covering bolts on here. We're also going to completely remove this other side as well. It's the same four bolts here. So now we've got all of those removed, one tip for these is they are very, very easy to round. I actually rounded two of them, but luckily you can pry it up and kind of undo the last one with this and then take it out with a flathead screwdriver. So be very careful when undoing these bolts because they're on quite tight and they're very easy to round. But now we've got six more Phillips head screws holding the ECU to the frame. So we're going to go ahead and remove those as well. So we flip it over, we can see where we need to drill some or modify this slightly. So we've got a couple of different connectors here. So it needs a way to get into there. So we're gonna cut a slot. Let's try and work this out. So we're gonna cut a slot right here. And also drill a hole through on this for the vacuum hose to go through. So I'm gonna get a pen and we're gonna mark out where we're gonna drill and cut. Next, we're gonna send a punch where we're gonna drill our hole, which is right here. Now this is fairly difficult because this isn't sturdy, so I'm gonna do this on my lap. But yeah, we're just gonna send a punch the hole using a center punch and then a hammer. So now we're going to go ahead, take our drill, and drill through here. And now we can go ahead and reassemble this whole unit. Now what we're going to do is we're going to grab our ME221, and we're going to plug that, or just drop that into here gently. And this is going to use four bolts in the exact same mounting position, so you don't need to drill any holes for this, to just mount in. So we've got our ECU attached into the frame, just perfectly like that. So now we're going to go ahead, put the backing plate on, and then we're going to attach our wires and wire them through into the correct positions. We've got our backing plate in now, so before we put the top cover on, we're going to connect up all of our cables. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to have our vacuum hose Go straight through here, and this is going to plug into this port right there. So guys, now what we've done, we've attached the tuning cable into here, 
And we've got this coming out. We're going to permanently leave that in just so we can plug that in at any point. Probably the best having a USB extension. Otherwise, you're going to have to sit on the floor in the car. So now everything's all back together. We can go ahead and place this back into the car. So what we're going to do first is we're going to plug back both of these into their respective ports. Now both our wiring harnesses are plugged back in. We're going to go ahead and bolt this back to the chassis of the car. We can go ahead and put our cover back on. So now we've done all of the work on the inside of the car. We're going to go ahead and route this all the way under here. And this is the inlet manifold pressure. So we're going to connect it into one of these. We're just going to tee off one of these and attach this on. Now just cut the vacuum hose for the ECU down to size, put a spare bit over there and just plug that into the T-piece. The final thing we need to do is wire up our IAT sensor. So we're going to start off by building the harness. I don't have the slightest clue what this thing is. Let me know down below if you know what this is. It's like a rubber trumpet. That works as a sick trumpet. So we're going to unwrap our wire. I'm using just some 5 amp cable from Halfords. So we're going to unwrap this. I've had this for ages and never used it, so at least it's coming to good use now. Now we're going to take out some of this. Now I'm going to go into the engine bay and measure how long this needs to be, but I think a metre is more than enough, so we can do that and then cut it down. So we're going to be using just over a metre, which is you know, more than enough, but it just means that I've got extra, so I can basically conceal it and hide it in the engine bay. So we're going to cut one of those off, and then measure out the second to the same size. And then cut off our second piece. Bish bash bosh. Cool. So now we've got our two pieces of wire. We're going to go ahead, chuck one down there on the floor, and we're going to strip some of the wire from here. And I'm just working out how much we need, which is not really a lot. So maybe go like there. I'm stripping off 20 mils off the end. That's going to be on the safe side. What we're going to do twist this round to connect all of the pieces together. Now we're going to go ahead and feed it into this. So we don't need that much, so I'm going to cut off about half. So, we've, so you're better off just stripping it by 10 mils, I think. We may have to strip off even. We may have to cut off even more. Let's have a look. Okay, call it call it five mil. So what we've got, we've got some heat shrink tubing, which is going to be perfect for this. So we're going to cut our piece in half and feed it onto the wire. Once that's on, we're going to line this up in here and using some wire crimpers, we're going to crimp this down and squeeze that down as tight as possible to hold our wire in place, which we've done pretty well. So now I'm just going to give it one more squeeze on this other side and make sure this is nicely in place and give a little tug on your connection to ensure that it's completely tight and now we're just going to go ahead slide the heat shrink tubing over it so after we slid the heat shrink tubing over it we just use a lighter just to close this up so now we've got both of our wires completely done and we've got some nice solid connections we're going to attach it in to our wiring harness now, there's no polarity on this, so it doesn't matter what way round you do this, but we're gonna go ahead and attach these in. So now we've got both of our wires, we've just plugged them into the harness, which comes provided, and then this is gonna plug in directly to our IAF. So it's just gonna literally go in like that. I'm not gonna put it in now, because this isn't installed. So if I put this down, I'll show you what I've done. So on a piece of the intercooler pipe here, I have drilled a 10 millimeter hole and then I've used an M12 by 1.25 tap I think that's what this is yeah M12 by 1.5 and I've used that tap and gone ahead and tapped this so this literally screws straight into the intercooler piping now what we're going to do to make this extra solid is use a bit of JB weld and also some blue thread lock on the thread. But guys, we're not going to completely install this into the car. And the reason for that is the idle control hose, which goes from the stock intake, needs to go into this as well. And because we haven't got the drill and the tap to actually attach that bit on with like a barb fitting on the other side to connect the hose on, 
then when we drill and tap it and everything like that, it's going to create loads of shavings inside here, and I don't want those going into the end of here. So we're going to keep this removed for the moment, but it's perfectly fine to do that because this will work fine on the car using the normal MAF, but it's a lot better. But you need to install this for turbo applications. And guys, to give it the final seal of improvement, we've got a bang on that powered by ME221 sticker. So I've removed where the Sparco one was because that's where this one fits perfectly. And I'd rather have this one than the Sparco one, so we're just going to peel off the backing plate and apply this vinyl. Bish bash posh. So yeah guys, that was the full installation of the ME221 plug and play ECU for the Mark 1 MX-5 by Moore, made by Motorsport Electronics. But yeah, thanks for watching. I hope you found this useful if you're doing this install yourself at home. It's a fairly straightforward installation. You just need to know a couple of basic uh, wiring skills in terms of like crimping wires and all of that sort of thing. But it's very, very straightforward. It's very much plug and play as it says on the tin. But yeah, thanks for watching. Be sure to give me a massive thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and found it useful. And subscribe down below for more awesome content. And if you want to turn on that notification bell as well, that would be absolutely amazing. And until the next one, everyone, adios.